Hello friends, this is Ganesh. Hope you are doing great. In this video, we are going to see two different functionalities of Odata calls. One is synchronous, another one is asynchronous. It's pretty simple because we have created so far many Odata calls. So that needs to be coming in either it's synchronous or asynchronous. Okay. So um, and then we are going to understand which scenario we need to go with either synchronous or asynchronous and what are the parameters to be used okay pretty simple and uh, so far we have created a lot of data service calls okay so those are coming under synchronous calls only meaning okay hold on it's, it's moving pretty fast today okay so meaning <clears throat> we didn't uh, mention anything specific to the call. So, so simply we call the auditor service with our get entity set, mostly with get entity set. Okay, so those are coming under synchronous calls. So the uh, idea of synchronous call is if the auditor URI or the client sends a request and it's waiting for the response from your backend system. Maybe uh, technically we can say client server. So it's waiting for a response from the server. Okay. So the response may be anything, success or error, but the response is mandatory. And the most of the applicable scenarios we have for the synchronous calls is get. So get request. Okay. So I'm sending information. I need the information back. Probably I'm sending a PO number. I want the PO information. I'm sending um, maybe a material information. So I want all the material information details. So these are the pretty simple examples to understand about the synchronous calls. And it's applicable where the response is mandatory. And until the response you received, the particular client call, a particular client is blocked until it returns happens. So the return may be anything, it may be a success or a failure like, or error message, whatever it is. But once the response is received, that call is ends. Okay, till that time the client is blocked. So this is the uh, idea of synchronous calls. Now you can take a call, whether you are auditor service, whatever you are doing or creating, whether it's coming under synchronous or not. So asynchronous calls means the auditor, the same thing, auditor URI or a client sends a request and it won't wait for the response. Instead, it start continuing the other process. Okay, so there are some process like A, B, C, D, right? So if it is a synchronous calls, it has to wait until the A completes, then only it starts the B. Probably we can use this in the batch as well, okay? batch call as well. So, uh, but in asynchronous, there is an ABC, it sends the information and it won't wait for the response to be done for the A. It automatically go to the B and start doing the PC process, okay? So that is the difference between synchronous and asynchronous. So it de de depends on your business need, you can select whether it's a synchronous or asynchronous calls. So asynchronous calls uh, are not supported by get method or get request. So it is a post one only. Okay, and it's it's mostly when asynchronous calls required is bad jobs. So bad jobs we don't require an immediate or we cannot receive an immediate response because it may take a longer period of time. So we don't want to wait till the bad job ends. Instead, uh, we can get a confirmation. It's like nothing happens in the middle. Yes, your request is received. So maybe you can get a like 202, I believe, the created message. So that is a success message. You received it, okay? But still the bad job is running. Probably uh, an example, I can send a badge ID and badge job name. So probably you can check later, okay? So not in the same uh, call. You can um, check the result of your bad job. Same thing for long execution report or... Uh, I think I added some, it's not here. Uh, it's nothing but uh, workflow trigger. So I want to uh, trigger a workflow through my UI application. So I don't want to wait for a response process. Yes, triggering has happened, it's fine. So maybe I can check the status later. So these are few scenarios, especially it's all coming under asynchronous call. So I don't want the response immediately. So I can check the status later. Then you can go with asynchronous calls. So some technical things. Uh, synchronous, I don't want to give any uh, any uh, technical because so far we have created everything is in uh, synchronous calls only. We, we don't want any particular parameter to be identified this is a synchronous calls. But asynchronous, yes, we do have a parameter. So as a post method, obviously you have a header parameters. One of the header parameters is prefer and respond iPhone ASYNC. So this is the uh, standard way of uh, sending the information to the backend system saying this is my asynchronous calls. So if it is an asynchronous call, then you can start writing the code. 
pretty simple simple if condition if this value yes it's coming in your header parameter you consider um, you consider like to start writing the functionality of your asynchronous or probably you can create a bad job you can start uh, triggering the workflow or you can submit a report which is long running uh, process okay these things you can able to make it and um, how to get this how to read it we might already know how to read the header parameter and we have a signature parameter called io tech request context and that is a method called get request header so from so this method carries all your header parameters so from there it's come to internal table it's pretty simple i have a code i'll show you then you can read especially this one whether you you do have a prefer parameter or not if yes start writing your own code and then I can send a, send a return message, not the uh, actual message, like actual uh, the process ends method. This is a, just a method, message saying that everything is in proper. We receive your request, then the process is submitted. For example, if it's a bad job, I can send back the job ID to, to, to a UI. So through the job ID, they can start checking the status of the job ID later. Okay, So that is one of the examples which we are going to see in today's process. So these are the places where you can see we can given um, differentiate. Yes, this is my synchronous or this is my asynchronous calls. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Let's get into the system. So this is my system. Let's create CJI synchronous or synchronous calls. Synchronous and synchronous calls. So I'm going to make very simple design here because these are we know already. So entity type, I'm going to create. That's for maybe I can say my jobs. Continue. Okay, so the properties are pretty simple. So I'm going to receive a bad job name and I'm going to send the bad job uh, ID back okay so bad job name it's going to be 50 okay and uh, it needs to be selected this okay otherwise we'll get an error while running it's not a syntax error okay and I need a job ID your J is caps it's not required as a key. String. It will be 10, not more than that. This is also under create GID. GID. That's it. So let me generate it. Okay. So you can have, depends on a business, yeah, you can have more. <coughs> so I'm generating my servers. So now I have to redefine the create entity because asynchronous is going to be happen in post method because the header parameters is not able to recognize in the get method. So it's coming under the post method only. So runtime artifacts, and DPC extension, go to workbench. So here method is create entity here it is let me redefine that okay so i have the code it's pretty simple and anyway i'm going to add it in the drive also so you can refer it because i don't want to write entire code here so let's keep the video a little simpler so let me copy the code so this is my code um i have few declarations i need input data to receive the values which is coming from my post method so it's nothing but what are the properties of my uh, shw um, entity type parameters it's nothing but job name and job id so i refer the same thing job name and job id okay j name and j id so that is the input which I'm going to read through the read entry data. We have seen it a lot, so I don't want to explain more again. 
and I have two more parameters, especially to hold the job name and job ID, I can say job count here. And here I'm going to read the header parameter value. And if you see the signature, you can see the IO tech request context is one of the signature here. So I'm just using that to read the header parameters and with the method called get request header. So it's come, it's come, it's a, sorry, it's output is kind of an internal table. So it carries all the parameters, not only the prefer, maybe because it has uh, an option of adding more than one line over there. So from there, I want to read the exact value of the parameter called prefer. So I'm going to give like kind of a rate table, but I used a, a new syntax. So name equal to prefer, I want that value. So if the value has respond if an asynchronous A, S, Y, and C, then I'm going to start working my job. So our example is the, we are going to submit a job. So I'm going to read the information through read entry data. And once it is received, I'm going to open the job and I'm going to submit it. I have a simple report, okay, just a report name, which is runs quite long because uh, I, I have a do over there and nested do as well. So let me show you because then only you can show whether it is running for a long time. You can refer or you can just check the status. It will say uh, job is still running or it is finished. So simple code and I have some two do's. So it, it runs pretty long time. Okay. And then job submit and these are the mandatory parameters over there. And finally, I just just close my job. Okay, and uh, once we create a job, you receive a job count is nothing but job ID. I'm going to send the job ID as a reference back to the uh, UI. Then using the job ID and job name, they can be able to uh, check the status. What is happening? Still the job is running or not? Okay. So this is especially for the asynchronous concept. So synchronous concept for this scenario would be your get entity method. So over here you have to redefine your get entity method, then empty set. Then you can send your job name and job ID, and you know that is one function module which sends, uh, which um, sends the job status. So with the help of that, you are able to get it. Okay. So let's activate this. So once it is active, then go back to create the service registration here and register local. So it depends on your business design. You can say like local or through a system analysis, you can create it if you have a different gateway server. So it's, it's green, then go to SAP gateway client and entity set this one and make sure it's in post and the parameters i'm going to give the parameters first so the parameters uh, the format is this one for each field okay so i have two fields but i'm going to give only one because i'm not giving anything in the job id that is only receivable if it is more than one parameter you have to pass a value separated by comma with the same format okay and that all we have already seen so Another the last step is the header name is prefer and uh, the value is respond async async right that's it this is the header parameter so the code is already ready to read this based on that there is if condition if the value is respond async then it start generating a job okay it means it's uh, submit a job obviously we'll get a job ID as well okay. So I'm in a post header parameter input parameters added and the header was also added then executed. It should get 201 uh, as a created status. Okay. And what is the job ID? So material job, job name as, as sent the same thing is received and this is the job ID. So if you go to slash O as some 37 and uh, it's just execute. So I have one job, it's still active. Okay. So because I have a do statements over there, if you keep refresh, so material job is 34, 36, it's keep increasing. Okay. 
So what happens, it's still, it's running. Uh, probably you can um, redefine the get entity set method now as you receive the job name as soon as the job ID and using that function module, you can come to know what is the status. Probably you have a refresh button in the UI and they keep on refreshing it. Every refresh, there is a get method, it go and check what is the status of the job in the backend system, okay? So probably that could be quite easy. You can just try it from your end as well. So this is a way to uh, use the asynchronous calls in the auditor calls, okay? asynchronous functionality in the auditor calls along with a header value. So hope this might be useful. Just go through words, play around, and if you have any doubts, please let me know. Thank you so much for your time. See you in the next video. Bye.